Hello and welcome to TI Now. We're here at Mobile World Congress Americas 2017 in San Francisco, and I'm joined today by Brian Bellendorf, Executive Director of Hyperledger, a Linux Foundation uh, project. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Brian, we've heard a, a bit about uh, uh, blockchaining uh, in the context of, of Bitcoin. So, uh, but could you explain a bit more and to give us a definition of what blockchaining is? Sure, so underneath these cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, at their heart sits this data structure, which seems odd for us to get excited about a data structure, but it's a data structure called the distributed ledger, right? Sometimes it's, it's also informally known as a blockchain. It's kind of the same principle though. It's a series of entries of transactions that are cryptographically signed one to the next, so you have integrity, you know what that, that every, every one that was created, the next one after it, can only be the one that followed it, that sort of thing. Um, and this is a ledger that is distributed amongst a population of companies, right? Or a population of organizations, actors, <coughs> folks who care about maintaining that common system of record between them. Perhaps because they're in a uh, industry together, perhaps they are uh, trying to do business, and they want a common ledger so that when they're routing payments between themselves or trying to figure out who owns this diamond, who owns this house, uh, they, they have a, a really clean record that shows not only who owns it, but what the history of that was as well. And so, uh, Ben, on the, uh, on the Bitcoin point, I mean, we understand it as being a, a tool for the financial services community, but can you give us some illustrations of other industries where, where blockchaining really is going to be beneficial? Sure. So, even within financial services, putting aside what you can do with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, let's look at a company like CLS Bank. CLS Bank, very few people have ever really heard of if you're not in the financial world, but they process all of the payments between national government banks in the world. Approximately five trillion US dollars a week in nominal value, which is a huge amount. Uh, they today try to route these systems between, you know, payments between these different databases and there's a lot of reconciliation they have to do. They're moving to using a distributed ledger to keep track of these payments and then do something called net settlement at the end of the day. Something that allows for these payments to be made uh, and cleared and confirmed within minutes rather than the days that normally takes, right? SWIFT, another example of this, DTCC, another example. Outside of the financial world, um, uh, there are some sectors that will benefit from this more than others, at least early on, uh, such as the healthcare sector. Uh, whether we're talking about uh, electronic medical records, which is kind of the holy grail for figuring out how to share these, uh, or we're simply talking about keeping track of doctor certifications, you know, uh, where is a doctor licensed to practice, have they recently certified, that sort of thing. Um, but then there's a whole class of use cases that span multiple sectors. For example, uh, the supply chain uh, uh, use cases, where being able to use a distributed ledger to keep track of objects as they move from where they're created or where they're pulled out of the ground, like they're a diamond, or pulled out of the ocean if they're a fish, and trace their, their journey on the way to the retail sector, right? To provide folks in that chain, and, and especially at the end, greater visibility into where these products came from, uh, as well as uh, greater integrity in rewarding uh, the good suppliers, the ones who deliver on time, and, and frankly, the ones who source from legal sources or ethical sources, right? So next time you go into a Whole Foods and you buy fish that was sustainably caught, uh, or uh, uh, you look at another product and it's got some marker of being organic, or you want to buy a diamond and know that it wasn't a conflict diamond, it's in, at some point soon it'll be blockchain technology that helps reinforce the integrity of that claim. And when you think about uh, the adoption of blockchain uh, technology by enterprises uh, in the industries you've described, what have been some of the impediments to, to the adoption? Has it been, are there capacity issues? Uh, security concerns, uh, what are some well, of those? Some of them are technological. This is still very early technology, right? And in some ways we're benefiting from years of you know, the cryptocurrency world, figuring out how to do some of these things. But even there, the amount of scale that they've seen is still on the order of you know, seven to 10 transactions per second, right? Which may be enough uh, for Bitcoin today, and they've certainly got some approaches to scaling that, but not enough for most of the modern industries out there, right? So part of the challenge has been how do we update, look at new um, consensus mechanisms, look at um, new 
smart contract languages. Smart contracts are programs that we can run on a network like this that help embody certain business processes and guarantees between uh, two parties doing transactions. Um, uh, so a lot of this is still, almost feels like alien technology in a way. Um, not unlike the way that in 1995, if we were sitting here <coughs> talking about the web, and trying to figure out what, what value are consumers going to get from this information service, right? From HTTP and HTML. It would be hard to make the case, right? It was hard to make the case. I was there making the case, right? Um, and as we started to do things like put web, webs, uh, well, sorry, uh, web ads on our, on our pages, right? Uh, ad banners and the like, uh, as we started to uh, plug in e-commerce systems, general, uh, at progressively the, the ROI became clear. And I think that's the case as well. We're still at very much a proof of concept stage, a pilot stage. There's a few production systems out there, but the technology is still really young. On the business side, one of the big challenges is there's no such thing as a blockchain of one, right? Uh, even at the proof of concept stage, even at the research stage, companies are really compelled to start to talk to their suppliers, their customers, and probably even their competitors to figure out what's, what's something useful we can do with this technology. We've discovered a new kind of hammer. Are there nails out there that look like they might fit with this hammer? Um, and, and that's requiring a lot of conversations, a lot of research, a lot of things that frankly are kind of silly, um, but it's, we have to do these kinds of things. Innovation is a messy, uh, very, very uh, uh, difficult thing to, to actually arrive at a, at a clear answer for uh, a, a given problem. And that's what industries are doing today as they're exploring blockchain tech. But um, uh, I think the clear, the, the clear patterns, uh, the patterns become clear very quickly. If you think of the uh, information communications technology industry, so you think about uh, the providers of technology, base technology, all the way to the, the delivery of technology. Yeah. Are there some, uh, what, 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 do you, what does blockchaining need from those types of companies sure. to advance? Well, I, you know, this is a full employment act uh, for, <laughs> for the industry, because this is about how we take many of the business processes in the world that today are embodied in, in human contracts, embodied in uh, error-prone back office processes that are embodied in you know, uh, central organizations that say, just trust us, we know how to do this, right? Uh, and inverts that into systems that are automated and distributed, but require all the participants in an ecosystem to stand up a node on a network to be a peer. Right, so that there's a lot of room for companies that can offer blockchain as a service. Right, uh, we've already seen IBM and Microsoft start to offer those, and Alibaba, I believe, offers it on the cloud. Um, telecommunication companies as well uh, would have a lot to get <coughs> gain by, <laughs> sorry, using blockchain technology to do anything from number portability to dynamic resource allocation. Uh, oh, sorry, dynamic spectrum allocation to all sorts of uh, well, portable billing as well. Um, and when you look at things like M-Pesa in uh, Eastern Africa, right, in Kenya, um, that was an example of a telco becoming a bank, right? So the lines are going to start to really blur. Um, you know, we've seen the financialization of everything, we've seen the concept of software eating the world, right? Um, I think the lines between what sector you're in, are you a telco, are you an IT provider, like, like a Google or an Amazon, uh, or are you a bank, are you a financial services provider, all those lines are going to get really blurry really quickly. Brian Bellendorf, Hyperledger, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.